Hello, I'm Dr. James Lamb. I work at North Alabama Medical Center and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the COVID uh, vaccine that's coming out or that is uh, being administered uh, all over the country right now. Um, there are a lot of pieces of bad information um, floating around in both the uh, social media world as well as on uh, the major media outlets and I wanted to address a lot of those concerns. Um, so that you can make an informed decision about the uh, vaccine itself. Um, the first step is to understand basically what mRNA is. And I find uh, recently that a lot of people simply don't understand even what that particular term means. And to understand that, you have to understand a little bit of uh, basic um, biology that you might learn in, in high school. Um, so you start with the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, we have DNA. DNA is your genetic code. It's what makes you, you. And on that DNA, there are little areas, genes, that are transcribed into RNA. RNA is then transported outside of the nucleus into the cell as messenger RNA, or mRNA. Once the mRNA is transferred outside of the nucleus into the cell, uh, it is translated into protein. That protein then does whatever function it's supposed to do, okay? Whether it's to um, cause parts of the cell to work a certain way or in the case of this vaccine, to create a, a protein that helps your body identify the COVID virus should you get exposed to it, okay? The mRNA molecule itself, it, itself is very unstable which means it doesn't like to hang around for very long. And this is important because if your body kept making the same protein over and over again because the mRNA was too stable, then you couldn't exist, you couldn't live. So your body needs to make different uh, proteins and, and, all, and different mRNAs all the time, okay? So the mRNA itself, when it, once it's outside in the in the, in the cell, it cannot go backwards into the nucleus. One of the common things I'm seeing is people thinking that somehow this molecule of RNA can go backwards and change your genome. This is not true. This is not scientifically possible. This is not how the biology works. The mRNA that exists in your cell, only exists long enough to make some protein, and then it goes away. And it's the same with this vaccine. The vaccine is an mRNA, which is a, a sequence that encodes for the protein, the spike protein on the COVID-19 virus, okay? Once that protein is made, the cell puts the spike on the outside of itself and the body recognizes that as foreign. It's at that point your body makes an immune response and you make antibodies. This is also the reason you experience certain side effects like feeling sick and, uh, and generalized muscle aches and things like this. It's important to understand that you are not contagious and you do not have the COVID virus. We are not injecting a virus, we are injecting an mRNA sequence that encodes a protein. That's it. The way we've done vaccines in the past is a little different, where we have made viruses and um, attenuated them or weakened them or killed them or used a piece of the virus and we've grown these things in different cultures and eggs and things like that. We purify the proteins and then we put different things in the vaccine to preserve, to preserve them and, and, and things like this. And then we put the vaccines in, our bodies make an immune response against the um, vaccine, um, against the, the whatever target we're, we're creating. And that's, that's basically how those worked. The difference here is that we're not injecting a protein we're injecting an, a message that your body uses to make the protein. So this is a very exact uh, type of science versus in the past when we just kind of put the proteins in there and let your body make whatever immune response it can. In this case, we're telling the body exactly what to make and we're telling it to make this spike protein so that your body will recognize the COVID-19 virus. The spike protein 
actually is what the COVID-19 virus uses to enter into the cell. So what we have seen through the studies, through these initial studies, is that not only does it decrease the likelihood that you will have um, severe consequences of the COVID-19 virus, such as death, but it also decreases the likelihood that you will even catch the disease or the virus itself. One of the other common questions I get is, how can I trust this vaccine when it came out so quickly? And what I tell people is that our ability to use and uh, manipulate and, and synthesize RNA is not a new technology. This is a technology that we have been developing and perfecting over the course of nearly 20 years. This is not new, okay? The other hurdle oftentimes that we find in, just in research in general, when we are trying to come up with a new treatment or a new vaccine, is frankly money. Uh, manufacturers have already had in place their infrastructure to make certain vaccines, and there is no in, incentive to go change how we do things um, for the vaccines that we've been making for 20, 30, 40, whatever years. In this case, we needed something quick. And another hurdle we didn't have was we didn't have the issue with getting grants and, and asking for money from different sources and piecing together these pieces the, these, and, and, and piecing together these bits of money over the course of many, many years to finally get a product that we can give to the community. What we have in this case is a tried and true technology that we have been perfecting, and now we have the government giving all of the money that it takes to get this done. So we have scientists for the first time being able to do science without financial restrictions. So they are able to do the science and get a good product out quickly. This is different than any other vaccine in history because of these facts, because we have a great technology that we've perfected and we have the government itself funding all of these ventures so that we could get a safe product out quickly. Now, the, the vaccine itself is about 95% effective. This is better than any other vaccine that we have basically, um, where you consider the flu vaccine is about 60 to 70% effective on a good year. We have this being 95% effective. One of the questions I get, um, pretty commonly is what about Bell's palsy? Bell's palsy was present in four people out of the 40 some odd thousand people that received this vaccine. If you look at the incidence of Bell's palsy in the, in the country, the, the national incidence is about 30 or so per 100,000 anyway. So the vaccine itself, although the four people that got Bell's palsy this is not that different from the risk of getting it just in the general population. So although it is important to report any side effects you get when you get this vaccine, um, there is no reason at this point to link the two. In other words, in this case, correlation does not always equal causation. And that's an important thing to remember um, because when we do studies, we have to report every single thing that happens that may be considered a potential side effect, right? What I can say is the side effects most certainly would be your body mounting an immune response, such as the feeling sick, the headache, maybe nausea, generalized weakness, these sorts of things. In rare cases, there have been issues with anaphylaxis. The CDC recommends this vaccine to most everybody. It does not recommend at this point that people that have a history of anaphylaxis and particularly those that have a history of anaphylaxis to prior vaccines, there are no other strict rules about who should and who should not get this uh, vaccine. But I would say to you that if you have a medical condition that you are concerned may put you at risk, then I would encourage you to talk to your doctor and get their input as to whether they feel it is safe for you to get the vaccine or not. A common question I get asked is if I've already had 
COVID, the COVID-19 vi uh, virus, should I get the vaccine? And the answer is absolutely yes. Because for one reason, when we mount a re an immune response against the COVID-19 virus, we're not just mounting it against that spike protein. Now you might have some immunity against it, but what we have done with this vaccine is enabled your body to mount an immune response through antibodies against specifically the spike protein. So even if you've had the COVID-19 virus, it is still important to get the vaccine. Another question I get asked, particularly from young women, is what does this vaccine do to my uh, ability to have kids in the future? In other words, does it cause infertility? And I am here to tell you that there is no evidence in the data that supports this whatsoever. In reality, this vaccine is quite simply made up of a messenger RNA, some salts and some sugars to keep it stable, and a fatty covering to allow it to get absorbed into the body. There are no preservatives. There are no other chemicals. We just have this message for your cell to make a protein. And in this case, it is a protein that helps your body fight the COVID-19 virus. The protein itself does not stay around long, nor does the mRNA. These stay around for a very short time and down the road when you're considering long-term side effects. What you're left with is not an alteration in your DNA, an alteration in how you make proteins. What you're left with is antibodies against this spike protein, which ultimately provides 90%, 95% effectiveness to the COVID-19 virus. That's it. There is no evidence that this protein causes any other issues whatsoever. This vaccine has went through all of the appropriate FDA tests and has been shown to be very safe and very effective. One question I've been asked by some of the people that work in the hospital is, when we inject this virus, you know, what temperature is it? Because we have to transport this vaccine at such cold temperatures. Um, what I can tell you is that we don't inject sub-zero liquid into your arm. Um, we warm it and it is essentially at, um, at, at normal temperature and it goes in your arm and we're, we're not injecting frozen particles into your arm. It has to be transported like that because as I mentioned, mRNA is very unstable and we have to keep it at a very cold temperature to keep it together so that it can get to your arm and do what it's supposed to do. When we talk about the COVID-19 virus, what we see all over the media is a wide range of of reports ranging from, from uh, total death numbers to daily death statistics, and it depends on what particular media outlet you're watching. But let's talk about the data. The data does suggest that the overall death rate is probably around one or so percent, okay? But that's not the whole story. There's so much more that COVID-19 does other than cause death. Death is not the only outcome measure when I'm looking at it from a, from a provider standpoint. I have seen more people with devastating strokes over the last four to five months that are under 40 years old than I've seen the entire time I've been in healthcare. And this is devastating. I've also seen other neurological sequelae that may occur in up to 30 to 40% of people that is chronic fatigue that we don't know exactly how this happens, but we see it happen, and I see this in my clinic all the time. We also see people have generalized muscle weakness, and this lasts for months after you've had COVID, and in uh, some cases I've seen people that they haven't gotten any better, they just feel just so weak. And this is not also considering the amount of lung damage that happens with COVID and the long-term complications people have from that. So I encourage you, don't look at the numbers and just consider the death rate because the death rate is one small picture of what this is doing to our overall healthcare system. With regards to the difference between the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, they are very similar in, in makeup and in how effective they are. The main differences being with the Pfizer vaccine, 
you take it at, at essentially day one and at day 21, whereas with the Moderna, it's you know day one and, and four weeks later. It's important to know that once you get one vaccine, so if you decide you're going to get the Pfizer vaccine, it's important to get the Pfizer vaccine the next time. Now, this doesn't mean that anything bad is going to happen if you don't, but that's what the FDA is recommending is that you get, if you get one, you stick with that one the next time around. With regards to how long this vaccine remains effective, at this point, we simply don't know. We are hoping that enough people after learning about this vaccine, feel safe enough to take it so that we can get herd immunity to completely wipe COVID out. And maybe we don't even have to worry about a booster in the future. My concern is that there are so many people that may refuse to get the vaccine because they don't know what it is that we may end up requiring boosters in the future to maintain our immunity. So I'm hopeful that through education and through understanding what the vaccine is, that enough people will feel safe and not feel like a guinea pig to get this vaccine and help us not COVID out. In summary, I hope you guys now understand what mRNA is. I hope you understand that this is a safe vaccine. This is an effective vaccine. And that if you take this vaccine, you're going to help us as a whole fight this pandemic.